Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to get into doing our uh, outdoor furniture for our upstairs patio here. But before we get into that, a couple of you guys have been asking about what my setup is, uh, what my graphics card is in particular. So today I'm actually going to be trying out uh, one of AMD's new WX series cards, specifically their entry level 2100 card, uh, just to see how powerful it is. Normally for these videos I use my NVIDIA GTX Titan Black, but honestly it's not really designed for this sort of work and it uh, isn't exactly an affordable card either. If you can even manage to get your hands on one because I think they've been out of production for a little while. So hopefully I can give you guys some useful consumer advice about the 2100 and if it's something you're interested in, if SketchUp is something you use on a daily basis, uh, or something you'd like to get into but don't have a whole lot of money to throw at it. Um, but yeah, so let's get into uh, doing our patio. So if we go ahead and toggle our plan on, there really isn't any information about what we're going to do up here. Uh, but if we remember the picture that we had back when we started this, there was actually some indication as to what to do up here. They basically have a love seat and a couple of uh, smaller chairs with a coffee table layout. I think what we'll do is actually do two love seats. Maybe we'll put one here or put both of them sort of on the outside near the... Um, the, the fencing, and then a coffee table in the middle. I don't think we're going to do this. This almost looks to be sort of a wicker. I think we'll do more of a basic sort of wooden frame to sort of match a lot of the stuff that we've already done. And uh, just to save us some time, we'll actually reuse the cushion that we used for the love seat in here. So we'll go ahead and copy that and bring that up here. Now I know what you guys are probably thinking. There's a lot of sort of recycling of assets, but uh, if you remember back when we made this, this actually took a fair amount of time to do, and just to save me some time for the video process, we'll just reuse this asset. If you guys want to have it look a little bit different, maybe even put a piping around it or something like that, then you can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, but just for the sake of the video, we'll reuse this. So we'll go ahead and rotate that to zero degrees, so it's on this axis again. And we'll uh, figure out our dimensions here. So I'll actually just draw a rectangle on the floor and pull this up and then push this down to here until it sort of starts intersecting with the rectangle. Uh, we could just measure the cushion, but it's going to be a bit more difficult now that it's sort of rounded and it'll be hard to tell if we're getting a straight measurement across or sort of a diagonal one. So we'll just do this and it doesn't need to go right to the ends. We'll leave a little bit of space sticking out. And so now we have basically four foot ten. So we'll actually just reduce that, say four foot ten there. Push that down to there, erase our guides, and now this can sort of be the base of our frame. So we'll start honing in on the, the shape of our cushion. And we'll push these ends down now as well, try to get an accurate sort of uh, width measurement. If we measure it this way, we can basically say two foot five. And now the height doesn't matter, so we'll just leave that sort of where it is now. Uh, and we'll start actually pulling out some squares, maybe uh, we'll use our tape measure, say 5.5, and maybe even a bit thinner than that, maybe we'll say 4, or maybe 4.5, and we'll say 4.5 this way as well, sort of square it off, so we can put the legs on the outside, and now we'll actually move the cushion out of the way, we'll drag this over here, say 8 feet, get it out of the way, and now we'll just erase these lines. We don't want to push it flat because it will actually erase the main rectangle here, and we don't want that. Bring this over 4.5. Actually drag it down to the end. And then say 4.5 there and 4.5 here. And then just draw in another rectangle. Erase our guides, erase that line. So now we'll drag these up 2 foot 5. And now we'll drag the middle up, reverse that, drag it up a foot and then say maybe five inches underneath here, maybe another 0.5, and we can draw a line across here, push that all the way through, and we'll just offset this in 1.5, push that up four inches, erase these extra lines. Now what we'll do is draw a line across here, bring that up 4.5, Draw that across there, and so now we can pull this piece across. And looking at this now, these legs do seem a little bit thick, so maybe we'll just undo that. And then we can bring these in, say, 0.5 on each side. Drag a square around this, and then we can just shave this off and erase the pieces that are left behind. We'll do that for the rest of the legs. 
So now our legs are four inches across. So what we'll do is uh, just go back down here again, draw another line across, drag this up four inches. We can square this off again, put another line in there to separate the pieces. We'll just triple click this and move it a little bit further into the patio so we can see this side a bit better and drag a line out on this side, drag that up four inches. And there we go. And so what we can do on this side now is bring this in 1.5 and just draw these lines off, separate those faces again, and then push this down maybe a quarter of an inch just to give it a little bit of definition. This really isn't something that we're going to see, um, but just as an extra little bit of detail, if we do end up getting any lighting or shadows uh, in there from the corners or anything, we'll be able to see it. And so now what we can do is sort of add a top to the railing. We'll see another four inches here. Bring that down. So now we can add the top to our armrest here. See another four inches. Drag that line across, hit P, tap control, and then we can drag this over to meet the other side. Delete our guides again. Do the same for here. So that does it for the armrests. And these may be a little bit high, uh, but we can reduce the height of these after we get the cushion on there. We'll do the back uh, the same as well. Bring this over. So now we can go ahead and slide our cushion into place and see if it works. Let's bring it in here, slide it back. Uh, and I guess maybe what we should have done is brought these back another four inches to compensate. I kind of wasn't thinking about where this was going to go, but we can just easily do that. Say another four inches here, and then push everything down four inches. You can erase all of the pieces that are sort of uh, left behind. And what we'll do is actually bring this board back 1.5 so that it's actually being supported by these legs here. And so we can go and we'll hit K so that we can sort of see the invisible faces. Maybe even just push this back 1.5. Uh, hit K again, turn those lines off, and we'll just erase these extra lines in here. And we did sort of mirror the dimensions of the existing love seat for this one, and I think we'll actually make it a little bit longer, just so we can separate the uh, the cushions in the middle here. I think we'll have two cushions rather than the one. So we can go ahead and make this probably about a foot longer. So we'll just triple click this. We'll say uh, outdoor love seat, group that. And so we'll just double click all of the faces sort of connected to this side uh, of the love seat. Bring these over a foot. And maybe not even that far now that I'm looking at sort of how wide it's going to be. Uh, maybe we'll just add an extra eight inches to it. We'll just hit hide on this for a second so we can see what's underneath here. And maybe what we'll do just to make this uniform back to front is drag this out. Uh, I guess that was the two and a half inches, 2.5. Uh, and I do apologize for how often I change and manipulate things, but ultimately that's what happens when you make something from scratch and kind of need to see what it looks like before you can decide whether or not it's what you're after. All right, so there we have the sort of widened frame. We can go back up and we'll say unhide last. That'll give us our cushion back. And so now we can basically draw in a guide halfway between. We have five foot six. So we can say two foot nine to the middle there. We'll grab our cushion, hit S, and scale it down to that line there. And then we can scale this side to this line right here. And then we can go ahead and duplicate our cushion, drag it over, hit S, drag it to this line. And then we'll grab, grab this side, drag it over to this line. There we go, hit that. And then I guess what we can do is do a minus one shift, uh, just to sort of reverse the details that we have, if we turn on our shadows, we should be able to see some of the indentations that we have going on with the top of the cushion here. And they're definitely a bit more difficult to see, but uh, they are there. So we'll want to make sure that they're not identical on both cushions, uh, at least not uh, obvious anyway. So we'll turn that back off again. We have our cushions now, so we can kind of see whether or not if these are too low or too high. I think that's actually pretty good in terms of the armrest. So we can leave that where it is. And now we'll want to get two cushions out of these and we'll just see if we can sort of squat these down uh, to make the back cushions as well. So we'll copy these, bring them up on the blue axis and we'll rotate them. So we'll just give our red axis here, rotate 90 degrees, maybe even just angle them down a little bit, something like that. Drag them over to here. 
and just see where they uh, fit best. Pretty okay there. We'll drag them back a bit more. And then again, we'll squat them down so that they stick up a little bit above the back of the uh, cross member piece there and bring them back out again so they're not intersecting so much with it. Say about there. And maybe even sort of squat them down in width again. And maybe what we'll do is rotate one of these 180 degrees. And we'll just sort of reposition it a little bit so it's similar to the other one. Again, we don't want it to be identical. That's sort of a giveaway in rendering is when everything sort of looks exactly the same uh, or is positioned the same or there's a very obvious pattern in the placement of something. So we don't want the cushions to be placed the same. Maybe even we'll go in and rotate this a little bit to be sort of offset uh, with the sort of lay angle of the cushion. Put it down that way. Pull this cushion over a little bit so they're a bit sort of tighter in the middle there. Same with this one. Then we can grab both of these and scale them over to this line. And then the same, we'll do the same with this one. And so now what we can do is actually sort of pull a paneling across the inside here and we'll say, uh, maybe we'll have it be flush with the inside. So what we can do is drag this over 0.75. And then we'll want, say, four panels on the inside. So we'll drag this up an inch, drag it back down an inch so we have one there. We'll do another one. We've sort of done this technique before. But if you've missed it, essentially what we'll do is just draw out the amount that we want on a consistent uh, measurement. In this case, it's one inch. And then we can scale this up. We'll drag the middle one here up to there. So that'll give us four equal parts. Uh, and of course, if you know the measurement, then you can probably just draw them in anyway and divide it up. But if it ends up being sort of a weird measurement, maybe it's two foot three eighths and you don't want to have to break down the math and what that equals uh, in quarters, then you can just uh, draw out a bunch of lines and then scale them up. So now we'll draw our line up here like this, drag another one in, say 0.2, then we'll say 0.1 up and then draw in sort of a little square there. And we'll copy this square and we'll paste it for the rest of these uh, on, in the center of each of these lines as well. Erase our guides, erase these lines on the front. And so now we'll double click and copy this shape so we can use it on the other two sort of open faces. And then we can just go ahead and pull it across like that. And there we go, four equal boards go over on this side. Actually, we'll paste it off so that we can reverse it. Say minus one, bring it up to there. And we'll just pull it across like that. And now we have the back to deal with. And uh, maybe it wasn't necessary to pull these all the way through. And in fact, we didn't actually fix this board on the bottom anyway. So I think what we'll do is pull this back in four inches. Uh, it would make more sense to have it sort of match up, but um, maybe it won't really be necessary. So push that in four inches, erase these lines. And so now what we can do to make it look the same as the arm sides is we'll just drag in our four inch uh, piece across here, draw that line in. Now what we can do is reverse that, bring this up to into the corner here, and then we can just pull this across like that and that'll fill in the back piece. So I think that's that, uh, except the boards that we drew in didn't really compensate for the inside of the armrest, did they? So I think what we can do is grab the inside here, push it over 0.2, and then what we can do is grab these center pieces and just pull them over to this side, like that, and then we can push these in 0.2 as well. And so there we go, we can just pull those across, reverse those faces, and uh, sort of clean up the inside of the model as well. And that'll do it for the armrest. We can go ahead and do it on the other side as well. So what we can do is go ahead and group all of this. We'll say outdoor love seat full. Go ahead and drag this into the corner a little bit, position it up a bit, and then we can drag, uh, drag out another one. We'll just tap control and duplicate it, rotate it 90 degrees, and place one up against this railing here. And so now we can get into coloring it as well. So we can just go into this. Uh, we'll bring up the materials panel. We'll use our red so that we can adjust it without affecting anything else. Go over to edit. 
And again, we want this to be sort of a darker, um, sort of a washed out wood color, maybe somewhere around here. Uh, somewhat similar to a lot of the metal trim that we have going around here, though. Most of this almost has a sort of a green hue to it, but it's not too bad. So I think we can leave that where it is. Uh, and then we can go into the cushions now as well, and we'll want to make these red. And then we'll just bring them down to a very sort of off-white. Bring down that uh, brightness. Somewhere around there, I think. Looks good. So we can leave that. And now I think what we'll do, the same sort of technique that we uh, just used on this uh, sort of side paneling on our love seat, we'll actually do to the deck because we want this to be wood as well. And we can create that sort of effect using uh, sort of bump mapping and displacement mapping later in rendering. But we do want some sort of a physical uh, depth in between the boards. And I think that will look nicer. So what we'll do is uh, somewhat similar to, to that. We'll go into our deck here. So we went ahead and brought out 18 guides. So we'll have 18 boards with our deck surface here. So we can just drag box around those and then we can sort of bring these out to the edge here. We'll go right to the edge there. And I think those boards look uh, big enough. We want, they don't want them to be too thin. They don't want them to be too thick. I think that actually looks pretty good. And that makes the average board width about 10 inches. So that's a pretty sizable board. And so now we'll do sort of the same thing. We'll say 0.1 on either side. And we'll just drag out a little rectangle that we can copy and place on each board. So we'll say there. And then we can just duplicate that. We'll say X20. And then just delete the ones that uh, sort of go beyond. And so now we'll just drag out a box and select all of these tiny little rectangles. Drag them out from the doors to the edge. And we'll just resample the deck color from the edges here and paint the boards back in. And we'll just go inside the wall here and drag these out. Fit them to the dimensions there. And now what we can do is just erase this one because this one's already intersecting with this line here. But we will take a line and drag across here and square that one off. And we can erase that. So now we can go in and lower these down an eighth, say point, uh, 0.125. Now, unfortunately, there's no native way to uh, push and pull multiple objects at the same time. So unfortunately, we have to do them individually. So we'll just have to take our time and go through. And there we go. That'll do it for uh, adding a little bit more detail to our deck surface. We can go in and add even more detail to that later on. But we'll leave that where it is for now just so we can see the boards and what all that looks like. And so now we can get into doing the table. And I think for that, we'll just sort of mimic the design that we have going on with these love seats. So we can just draw in our rectangle. We want this to be sort of a bit more square uh, than rectangular. So we'll put in a shape like this. Maybe make it a bit smaller. Just sort of eyeball the, the shape for now. Something like that, maybe. So we'll say four foot three over this way. And just sort of dial in the dimensions to something a little bit more reasonable than say four foot ten that way. So we'll erase our guides, bring this in four inches on all sides so that we can find where the uh, the legs are going to go. Drag in those squares and then we'll bring those up to the top of the surface and then we'll say go on a bit further than that maybe even just two feet. Bring it up a bit above the sitting surface and uh, maybe even a bit higher than that. Or maybe we'll actually put a, the uh, the table surface on top of the legs so we can leave that where it is now. Bring this up. Bring the rest of these legs up two feet. And then we'll bring this up, the height of the bottom of our love seat. And then we can tap control and bring this up to the bottom uh, of where the, the cushions sit so that we can erase the underside here. And then we can push this in four inches. And so now while we're at this we'll group, we'll say outdoor table. And we can get into erasing some of the stuff without worrying about erasing other parts of our uh, house. Erase underneath the table there. And we'll actually just want to bring this in 1.5. We can reverse that. Drag our lines down and cut off what will effectively be the support pieces for the legs. And we have that. We can push this up, say, 4 inches just to give some sort of illusion of depth underneath the table here. And I guess this can sort of act as a, a shelf underneath the coffee table. 
So we can go in and put some supports in. We'll drag these down four inches uh, on both sides. And I guess what we'll do is drag these down from the inside. I'll say 1.5 uh, and then drag that rectangle down there. We'll tap control so we get a separate piece. Do that for this one. Draw in another face there. And so I think that we'll do it for the base of our table. We'll actually leave the table shape now and drag in our rectangle to cover the surface and pull this up two inches just so we can see what that looks like. And we'll copy this shape and bring it into here and then paste it in place and that'll make it a little bit easier to put that surface onto it. That'll effectively do it for our table. Maybe we should add a support into the middle here so we can try and find the middle. We'll drag out our guide, try to find that blue there. We'll drag a line out three quarters either side. Drag a rectangle around that, erase our guides again, and then pull this across. We'll actually tap control again so that we get another separated piece. There we go. Maybe we can do something sort of similar to what we have going on in the ends here. With the center of our table, we can sort of drag a guide in, say maybe six inches. And we can go over and look at our side pieces here. These were around three and three quarters. And so if we were to do that, say 3.75, just drag out a bunch of these. And so these are all the guides that we need, essentially with the same dimensions as those boards that we've drawn in. But we do have this little piece left over. So what we'll do is we'll just go up and drag all of these guides down, make sure that we have all of them, and we can scale them up to fit that space. And then we can go into there and say 0.1 for the ends, 0.1 on either side for the, uh, the middle boards. And go like that. And then we'll just copy this piece and we'll just drag it over to the center of this line. And we can hit uh, X11. There we go. And now we can just sort of erase this side of it. Erase our guides again. And then we'll just select all of these pieces. And then we can scale these the length of the table. And then we can do our eighth inch depression again. And there we go. That'll do it for the table surface. Maybe what we'll do is actually draw these lines along so that they look like uh, separated pieces. And there we go with that. So what we can do is copy our love seat color, paint our table the same color. Maybe we'll change the tabletop surface to be uh, something a bit different. And maybe it actually looks pretty good in, in black the way we have it there. It's a bit of a taller table, but it's definitely something uh, you'd want outside, especially if you're sort of standing around to have a sort of a high table surface. And maybe we will bring it down, say, two inches. So we'll bring this up two inches, bring these uh, faces up two inches as well. Now we can uh, raise this up in the ear, we'll say four feet, just so we can see the undersides of the legs actually have any faces on them. So we'll fill those in and uh, raise them up two inches. I think this looks a bit better, so now we can drag it down and uh, line it up on the floor, make sure we get it onto the blue axis, and then we can hold shift until it sort of snaps to the floor. And yeah, I think that makes it, a little bit, makes it look a little bit better. So we can turn our shadows on again and just sort of play around with this. See sort of what the lighting looks like. And uh, yeah, so I think all this is looking pretty good. So we can probably go ahead and end it there. But before we uh, finish off the video, we'll try out a little bit of rendering, seeing as we are using a new graphics card this week, uh, just to sort of test out the raw power. If anybody is in fact interested in getting this card, you can sort of see its capabilities with uh, doing a little bit of rendering with the old V-Ray engine. So what we'll do is we'll just go into our options here and we'll just, uh, these are the default settings. So we'll make sure that ambient occlusion is turned on and we'll go up to output and make sure that we have that on 1920 by 1080, just so you get a little bit more detail in the image. And uh, seeing as we are sort of doing a test here, we'll add some effects. We'll make the glass a little bit more reflective than it is. So we can, uh, we'll just turn off our shadows so we can find a decent camera position. Maybe we'll put, maybe we'll put the camera sort of right here and sort of just bring our field view down, maybe say 55, say something like that. So we can sort of see in through the windows a little bit, get a little bit more of the glass going. So what we'll do is we'll sample our glass so that we know what color it is, it's color A01. So that we can go up to our materials button, 
and uh, find it in our materials list here. So we can click on this. We right click on this. We can say reflection layer so that we hit preview again and it automatically adds a reflection to it. Now this is very basic. We could of course go in and make this look even more like glass. We can go into the material properties. Uh, you'll want to leave it on Fresnel, but you can change the IOR to make it essentially what uh, distinguishes something like water from, from glass to other uh, sort of things that are reflective and have almost a depth to them. But we'll leave it on this for now just to sort of, uh, just to see what it looks like. So minimize that. And I think all this looks pretty good. So we can just hit render. And uh, of course the V-Ray engine will take in all of our shadows and everything as well. So we don't need to worry about turning those on again. And you don't need to worry too much if you're finding it hard to follow. We will be doing V-Ray in much more detail later. So uh, this is really just to test out the card. Um, so don't worry too much uh, about trying to follow along. And there's not a whole lot of ambient occlusion coming out of that. So we'll turn this up to say two uh, and then try it again. And close that, hit render again, wait for it to pop up. And of course, this is sort of indicative of uh, what rendering is like. Uh, if you, you, know, you wanna make sure that something looks right, you need to tweak the settings. Uh, a lot rather than just finding something that works and then leaving it there for all of your renderings. All right, and so there's our rendering. And of course, all these surfaces are still untextured and we'll be getting into doing that later. But I think for now, that actually looks pretty good uh, just sort of with the basic SketchUp colors. Maybe we'll go ahead and try another little SketchUp scene here. And I think actually we'll just try rendering the kitchen here because there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. So we'll just find a good angle I think that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and hit render again and wait for that to pop up. All right, so this is rendering away. I think we'll go ahead and leave it there. Uh, we can probably get into doing some more stuff outside next time. Uh, maybe come inside and work on fans for the bedrooms, maybe downstairs. And as for the WX2100, uh, I think it's a great little card. Uh, I didn't have any major hangups with the rendering or performance stuttering, anything like that. Uh, more than kept up with the performance of my Titan, uh, which again isn't really designed for that sort of thing, but uh, for the price difference it's quite astounding actually. Uh, and if you want to get into modeling, then the WX series is a great place to start, so I'd recommend uh, checking those out. Uh, and if you like this video and would like to help support me make more videos like this, then you can check out my Patreon with the link below. Uh, thank you again everybody so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.